Well, happy Saturday, everyone. It's me, Deplorable McAllister, a.k.a. Linda Paris. Now, this is called the NarrowGateWeb.com. And it's really an interest packed full of information. It's a lot of this stuff was posted in 2017. So the, the videos that are referenced, you can really see the censorship when you go to a place like this. And the point of this video and picking up some information along the way, additional information, adding pieces together, is that when you go to the movies or turn on your TV set, you're not watching entertainment. You are subjecting yourself to a military operation, a serious military operation, a deep, deep programming um, instrument that is you're allowing your brain access to it. And it is manipulating you on so many different levels and it's manipulating various types of people that they themselves have programmed. So uh, I wanted to just sort of go over some of the stuff in this particular post. Now this particular post, it's called Butterflies and Rabbit Holes. It's from March 1st, 2017, and it's Richard Kalberg. And it says this post exposes the darker secrets of government mind control projects, including MK Ultra and Project Mar Monarch, which they're doing to us as well. They're doing it to the entire planet, everyone on the planet. Now, going back down here, this is why people get upset when you challenge what they hold most closely cognitive dissonance, mental conflict that occurs when beliefs or assumptions are contradicted by new information. Well, we've got a lot of assumers out there, people who just assume uh, because CNN and ABC and NBC and all these major networks are saying it, they assume it, it's got to be true. And it, it's going to take a lot of fact forcing, you know, in their faces to undo this assumption that they always make. They're in the habit of making the assumption. Why? Because they don't have time. The, these, these creatures have created a, an environment where p people don't have time for anything. There's so much to do. I always use the light bulb section of the store as an example, but it's a thousand tiny cuts. Uh, you go to buy a light bulb, you should be in and out. You should be in and out of there. No, no. They make all these gadgets with all these different kinds of light bulbs. So when you go to buy light bulbs, you're walking up and down this aisle, scratching your head, trying to see. That's another thing. Whatever they're putting in our food and in the air and whatever, they're messing with our vision. It's a a country full of eyeglasses and readers. I mean, we everybody has readers. I mean, we're all going blind by the time we're 30, our eyesight is starting to fail. And if you're like me, I don't even try to look at anything until I get my glasses as foolhardy. <laughs> you're walking up and down the aisle looking for the freaking light bulb that you need and you're picking up these packages and the text is so small that if you don't have your readers at the ready, you're not going to ever find it. Meanwhile, the clock is ticking, and if you have a job, you're on your lunch break, you've got to get back, whatever. It, it, it's just one thing after another. And another thing is things don't work. People don't do what they're supposed to do. So that means you have to go chase it down. The other thing they're doing is they're occupying our time having us work literally as slaves for them. Uh, somebody said to me once about... Uh, of sorting your garbage out and everything. First of all, I don't sort my garbage out. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't know. You guys probably think I'm a terrible person, but I think it's a bunch of BS. I went. I when I was working for CNN, we did piece after piece on, um, you know, where does the garbage go after you sort it out, and it all goes back into the same dumpster. They come and pick it up, and it all goes back into the same thing. And quite frankly. Uh, I think it's to get these big corporations to get us because I heard another person say, oh yeah, but they made a park bench out of uh, uh, some of this 
cardboard it, when people separated and all. Yeah, but who uh, who are we working for? Who's making that money? There's some company that's getting free labor and free supplies off of that. You can bet. And we are the dupes. We are sorting through our trash to provide them for the materials that they need and we're putting it out in a nice package that's another thing they won't take it unless it's tied up a certain way good god these people have us doing all kinds of miserable crap and it just gets worse and worse as time goes on so who has time to research what the news is telling you on every network well we know who doesn't have time <laughs> we can see that and there's a lot of people even though they know they're being lied to they just can't get out of the habit of looking at the news they don't know where else to look and i think one point of all of this is to get us to unplug from all of that and get out of this these habits that we're in because what they've done is they've created a world where we don't really have time to research anything and they're lying to us about everything so there's a mental conflict that occurs when the beliefs or assumptions that's what we have assumptions to a large extent you assume that child protective services is protecting children you assume that the legal system works well they wouldn't have been arrested if they weren't guilty well they wouldn't be found guilty if they hadn't done it you assume and i would suggest that over the years that this contradicted by new information has uh been in an upswing like a uh, forced uh, you know rapid upswing it was supposed to be a slow uh, trap that was set kind of like uh, in that movie Queen Bee where uh, Betsy Palmer says to uh, Eva's cousin that uh, oh you haven't been stung by her yet she's the Queen Bee she'll sting you first ever so gently like you won't even know it you won't even feel it but by the time she's through with you you'll be you know dead from bee poison <laughs> he'll be stung all over and so that's kind of what this is it's slow it was supposed to be a slow increase and in all of our the pressure on us was being slowly raised and uh we were going to be forced well, we psychologically trust ABC, NBC, CBS, uh, CNN, and and that the fact that they all agree. So that that's it. That's the trap right there. That's how powerful the media is. They literally mold our personalities. It's called modeling, and it's it's not just uh something that has to do with tv or something they came up with even it's monkey see monkey too basically i'm not saying we came from monkeys or anything but but it is monkey see monkey too i notice this with myself i sometimes i just shake my head and go you know what i am my father <laughs> or oh my god i'm turning into my mother or my grandmother or whatever because i watched them do, this is how they did things or approach things and so i model myself after you know my parents and my grandparents and i see how successful they were and i modeled myself afterwards after them and the same thing with uh these quote movie stars celebrities whatever they're always profiling their homes and their lifestyles they want us to think to model ourselves after them and we do we dress like these quote women and they're not even women so we're being deceived on such a massive level and pressured into not looking and the cognitive dissonance that's going to happen here is just going to be I see people with their heads exploding and stuff because they've got no clue they think as long as it's on ABC NBC or CBS 
we're fine. They'll go to all these movies and watch them and they're just opening up their mind for these people to tinker around with their brains. So this concept was introduced by a psychologist, Leon Fetzinger, in the late 1950s. And uh, later uh, researchers showed that when confronted with challenging new information, most people seek to preserve their current understanding of the world by rejecting, explaining away, or avoiding the new information or by convincing themselves that no conflict really exists. So most people, it's like an alcoholic in a way, because an alcoholic, if it's, if an alcoholic, an extreme alcoholic is confronted with a problem, they're being pulled towards like there's two paths in front of them. The pressure's building. They can either go um, exercise <laughs> Or they could go to the bar and have a drink, you know, and everything is pulling them to the left, you know, to the bar. And so that's what happens. We develop these habits of reaction, you know, because why? Because the bar is a guaranteed I'm going to feel better. That's why. <laughs> Maybe not the next morning, maybe not the long term. They know that, but it's an in instant. Uh, yeah, I feel a lot better now that I've had a few drinks. And uh, that's just the way it works. You go towards that because you know that you're familiar with that. And in this case, they don't, I don't even think care that, that if it turns out they're lying. Oh, well, I'm just used to watching CNN and I don't want to get my news from anybody else. It's that strong. Uh, anything they can do to preserve their current uh, matrix, basically. They don't want to leave their matrix. They like their matrix. Their matrix is like a life preserver. It's like a uh, teddy bear or something. Cognitive dissonance is nonetheless considered an explanation for attitude change. So eventually, like they're resisting, they're resisting, they're resisting, but they are changing their attitude, uh, probably subconsciously. It's, it's like planting a seed and then someone else comes along and waters it a little and somebody else comes along and what it opens the, you know, suffering from it is actually the door cracking open, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And here it talks about denial. The human mind has a primitive ego defense mechanism that negates all realities that produce too much stress for the brain to handle. It's called denial, you know, such as there are, you know, a, a lot of different species living inside the earth and many of them are just monsters. <laughs> People are going to deny, deny, deny. That's what I did. When I first read about this reptilian thing and I went, oh, that can't be it. I was just instantly, no, 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 no. That's not it. Giant lizards. I don't think so. I, I, I just denied it. I just blocked it out. I said, no, I don't even want this to be. This is frightening. And I got a lot of stuff off my hard drive that I wish I had back because I thought this is just evil. This is here to scare me. <laughs> That's what I thought. I thought, who put this out there? <laughs> They're fear-mongering, but of course now I can't get away from it, but I heard it. I denied it. I, that, that's what I did. That It was producing too much stress for me to even think about that. That was just awful. So getting into this MK Ultra, and uh, this is just a short history of it. Mangala was a huge factor in this and he is a monster and I, I believe he's probably still alive I don't know what he might look like but um, apparently he was body jumping the whole time they said uh, he went by green Dr. Green you know Greenberg green you know Mr. Green he, he always used the word green, like the green man who is supposedly Satan, so that he had all these altars and these identities. And he seemed to be always in his late 50s. Max Spears said this. He never seemed to age past his uh, late 50s, early 60s.
And here he says, the more we do to you, the less you seem to believe we are doing it. And that's cognitive dissonance. So they came over here, uh, in Paperclip came over here with uh, Project MK Ultra, and they just kept on doing it and used, they formed the CIA and began to use it on us. They were using it on us the whole time. So here it is, you can see they're all moving around him. And I, this is a, well, I don't know if it's a mind control glitch or a clone glitch. Uh, I think the clones malfunction like that. Uh, here's another one with Clinton. And I know you've seen this one of him just staring into space. And this is George Bush hates black people. So Kanye, we you can actually see Kanye resisting the MK Ultra programming. Um, this butterfly, we've seen it on everything. And this is what I really wanted to get to. It's dissociative identity disorder, DID. Dissociative identity disorder is multiple personality. DID is what I'm going to call it. So Project Monarch is all about DID. It says trauma-based mind control aims to fragment the mind of the so-called monarch victim, thus to split the personality repeatedly and deliberately. And this is how they run the super soldier programs. They split the personalities according to these people's skills, innate, inherent skills. They split the personalities when they're young, when they're very, very little, like five years old. And they start to train each personality. And uh, they come up with these avatars and these clones for these personalities to go into. And then they rent the clone out. And if perhaps the clone should die or be killed or something in battle or warfare or during the course of an operation, the uh, soul or the consciousness of it will go be zapped back into the original person's body. So it, it, it's almost like a soldier that never really dies. And that's what Ileana was talking about that they're working on down under Antarctica right now is creating these super soldier hybrid bodies for these altars to go into. And the reason they start at age five and three to five is because children are extra malleable. You can really shape them much more effectively. The, the older they get, the harder it is. And you can get more personalities and, and better results from children. And let's face it, they, they are uh, creeps. They, they like children. They like doing it. They, they don't dislike doing this. Moving down here, it, it talks about, um, you don't get dis, uh, identity, DID naturally. It has to be created through trauma. And um, so, you know, it, it's something that they do. And you can see here where Jim Carrey, them, you know, this whole thing. And when you get back down here, uh, the three faces of Eve, the Fight Club. I, I don't know this one, but here it is right here. Superman. Well, that's a multiple personality. Batman, Spider-Man, Scooby-Doo. Now, these are all things that we are used to seeing that we just accept it. So you can see them doing this here. Uh, Beyonce, Queen Bee, okay? Queen Bee, the one at the top of the pyramid whose consciousness, who has the ability to have ideas and a consciousness that bleeds down the pyramid, that bleeds out, that... Um, other people catch and they're on the same wavelength. They're all making the same hand gestures. They're all singing the same lyrics. They're all dancing to the same beat. It's Queen Bee. She's affecting the uh, consciousness of this whole crowd of people. She's at the top of the pyramid. The dancers are behind her and usually in a pyramid shape. So it's all of that uh, mind control. 
and the mind control is uh, achieved through the fragmenting of the personality at the early age of three to five. They don't, you know, these kids never have a childhood. Uh, I have someone else that takes over when it's time for me to work. And when I'm on stage, this alter ego that I've created, so it, that's what it is when she's on stage. Yeah, I don't think that's a female, by the way. And same here, Roman is my alter ego. He's mean. He says the things I can't say. Well, something happened here. <laughs> that's very clear. I mean, some of them, there's no doubt they've been through something. I mean, this, you know, you, you, they presented this mother-daughter stove. We started a fashion line and we're just close mother-daughter and all of this. Nah. So down here, it talks uh, general symbols of monarch slaves holding one's own head. Puppets. Puppets. Everywhere puppets. Mickey Mouse. Chains, keys, cages, covering of one eye. Triggers for altars, which are programmed to be more silent. Mouth shut, forefinger at mouth. Symbols for beta sex slaves, cats, leopard skin. General dissociative identity disorder sim symbols. Multiple display of the same person like Eminem or, or any of those album covers. They all have it. <laughs> Cracks in the display of the person, the split personality. And I was just watching the talented Mr. Ripley last night because all of this stuff reminded me of that movie. And I'm going to do a decode of that movie uh, because there's a lot going on in it. But it starts out with big slits going down his face. The talented Mr. Ripley who is always somebody else. And it, it says... Um, that books and movies are often used in the programming process. And symbols from Alice in Wonderland, the monarch butterfly fly, the monarch butterfly, which is a general Alice trigger, white rabbit, trigger to follow, clock, trigger to hurry. The clock is seen in all the movies too. It's always used to generate more, uh, you know, anxiousness and, and uh, anxiety and stress. Like you're watching a scene, you know, they want it to be tense. They want you to feel the tension of it. And so they use the clock all the time, like a bomb going off or something. But someone's trying to beat the clock and get there. And that whole phrase, beat the clock. Uh, the mirror, which is a symbol from Through the Looking Glass. And it's a trigger to enter the world behind the glass. Symbols from the Wizard of Oz, the Yellow Brick Road, the trigger to follow the way. Cyclone, trigger to flee immediately. Ruby slippers, just a general trigger. And you know how they love their red shoes. Rainbow, trigger to follow. And I, I thought this was very interesting. Bluebird, one of the earliest symbols for mind control is the blue naped monarch. This symbol is representative of Project Bluebird, a forerunner to MK Ultra that also spawned Project Artichoke. And Project Operation Artichoke was a CIA project that researched interrogation methods and arose from Project Bluebird. And it, it developed in 1951. Now this is extremely interesting says, as you can tell below, the bluebird symbol featured prominently in early Disney movies. And you might ask yourself, well, what's wrong? How do they do it? What is wrong with watching a Disney movie of your kid? They're programming your kids. Note that bluebirds are always presented as happy and helpful, which is undoubtedly meant to subliminally program unsuspecting viewers, mainly children, to respond positively when seeing that symbol. A symbol which actually has sinister connotations. So if your kids are responding positively to the bluebird symbol, that's an effect they want. They want kids to respond positively 
to this bluebird symbol so that they can use that when they further program kids. So if your kids are watching this and they're going to think bluebirds are good, bluebirds are happy, I love bluebirds, you know, maybe somebody, I love bluebirds, I don't know why I love bluebirds, I just love bluebirds, you know. It's the programming. They're being told to love bluebirds in all of these cartoons and things. And of course, you might also recognize this symbol as the logo of one of the most popular social media platforms, which tells you there's nothing good, happy, and helpful about the freaking bluebird. It's a mind control device. And people probably gravitated towards Twitter because bluebird. <laughs> and uh, it says here that bluebirds have also frequently featured in famous songs by numerous songwriters, such as uh, Bluebird of Happiness, Hello Bluebird, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, Bluebirds Fly. I'm always chasing rainbows, waiting to find a little bluebird in vain. Uh, zippity doo -dah, Mr. Bluebird's on my shoulder. David Bowie's Lazarus, I'll be free just like that bluebird. Uh, there'll be bluebirds over the white cliffs of Dover. And um, it says a particularly remarkable instance as there are no bluebirds in Europe. And Paul McCartney and Wings, Bluebird. It says note that the rainbows are also a common trigger used in connection with the Wizard of Oz as listed earlier. So when you're watching these movies and you see these things like bluebirds and stuff, you should stop and look at it and think, wait a minute, what's going on here? You know, what, what are they trying to do? And here you go, Bluebird, Operation Bluebird, deliberate creation of multiple personality by psychiatrists. So let that sink in. They've got psychiatrists deliberately trying to create multiple personalities and they're calling it Operation Bluebird, Project Bluebird. And, and here is the multiple personality symbolism. Uh, there's Tommy Lee. See, I have half of the stuff I don't even know, but uh, I don't know who any of these people are, but this is Tommy Lee's album cover. I mean, and uh, this looks like it might be Gaga or somebody. Uh, but you can see all of this album art and stuff. It's so, it's, it, it's indicative of cloning and of multiple personality. And all of this stuff is right in our face. So it says here in the butterfly, uh, two particularly occult meanings are when the butterfly covers one eye, which is the eye of Horus, or is placed over the mouth, which is silence programming. And you can imagine what that is. But uh, you can see here, you know, if you go back a bit, you can see the so many butterflies. And this uh, whole entertainment industry is just saturated. Entertainment, art, fashion. Uh, it's all just saturated with uh, monarch butterflies. So, and, and look at the people who are wearing them, okay? I mean, they all seem to be them. Now, I want to talk about the fashion industry because what they're doing is they are normalizing this sort of uh, hybrid uh, idea. You know, they're creating fashions that make people look inhuman. Well, why? Why are they doing that? And if you think I'm kidding about this, also, I, I think these are transhumans. I really do. And I did a video on the Dulce papers um, where they were talking about all the hybrid experiments that they were doing. They're trying to develop a genderless being. A lot of the beings that they're creating... There's no genitals. There's no gender. They have no gender. They don't want that. They want to be the ones to create the, 
the people, the beings in the lab. They don't want us having children. They want genderless beings. So here you've got something. I, I don't know what the hell that is. That is just freaking scary because you think it's a guy, but then it's got these breasts, but then it's got these guy legs, but then you don't know what the hell is going on. So is this what they're wearing to the clubs? <laughs> yeah, this guy's got a claw hand. These are all fashion photographs, you guys. They're, they're I, I don't know whether, <laughs> I know fashion is exaggerated, but what point is there to this? to get everybody to accept the transhumanism. That's what. Here's another one. Now, in case you think that this is not, this is, it's, it's not transgender, okay? It's transhumanism. They're, you know, hermaphrodites, all of them hermaphrodites. I mean, this is what they worship. This is their God. They're building monuments to this thing all over the planet. I mean, this is it. These these hybrids, these mixed up genes, these things that they're creating, that, that puts them in the position of being the gods when they're creating crap like this, this hideous uh, goat-headed thing. And they think it's a masterpiece. To them, it's just the perfect thing. Uh, I guess they think they're going to usher in the uh, Antichrist or something like that through this thing or something. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I think it's just an ode to their ability to uh, mess with DNA and create things with it. And they're an ode to their uh, success in keeping their own species somehow alive and kicking. This is Queen Maud of Norway, who looks just like a guy, especially here, like a guy on Halloween or something. <laughs> and here is Princess Nicholas of Greece and Denmark, okay? They, give, they, they always give these uh, grand names, Grand Duchess Elena Vladimura. Well, that's a guy, okay? <laughs> Margaret, Queen Margaret of Denmark, oh my God. Well, you know, you can tell by the receding hairline, which I have a theory. That's why most of these uh, British ladies wear hats to cover up the receding hairline. But this one doesn't seem to care. <laughs> Princess Helen of Greece and Denmark. Come on, come on. Queen Louise of Sweden. I'm telling you, the list goes on and on. I could be here all day showing these. But uh, my point is, all you have to do is turn on one of those... Uh, British uh, Agatha Christie productions, and you're going to see the same thing, this exact same type of thing, walking around, acting like they, women. And uh, what was the movie I was watching, and I want to do a decode of it, it's uh, Rebecca. And in this movie, Rebecca, it's so obvious there, guys, I mean, when you're watching it, you feel like such a fool for even imagining that they were women in the first place. So, yeah, it's like this right here. Now, I'll leave you with this one. Uh, in this picture, it almost looks like it has the same DNA as Gloria Steinem. But look, something went horribly. Oh, dear. You would think this person would have their adrenochrome and they wouldn't end up like this but then you hear they get stuck in bad clones and that their dna degenerates but there's no doubt it's a guy you know on the left and on the far right and this is what they're doing this is the extent of the fraud they they're not anything they're the exact opposite of what they're pretending to be and the facade is being ripped away it's taking a long time. I'll agree with that, but I also will agree it didn't. They didn't just come here. They've been here for a long time, and it is a web. And when I'm going to leave you with this thought, when I was out taking out my Christmas lights in these palm trees, they have, some of them have stickers and stuff, and I'm out there trying to untangle these lights, and I was thinking that it's probably a lot like that, only a million times worse. 
that the White Hats have been picking through just this tremendous net, tangled net, and picking the main wires away as best they can. And what we're left with is these stragglers, these uh, wires that uh, haven't been untangled yet, haven't been pulled free of the system and tossed away.